This comedian always has something to say. I'm so hammered, I can't even see you. What? I can't even see you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Veronica with WatchMojo.com, and today we're chatting with Johnny Guardhouse, who is transfixed by Veronica's beauty. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> oh, I'm blushing now. <laughs> now, you've been touring now for almost 17 years doing stand up comedy. What were you doing before you began? Uh, I was trying to be a student. Uh, yeah, I went to uh, went to Carleton University. Uh, I took English, I think, and then uh, apparently, if you don't get a grade point average, they don't ask you back. So, did being a student help your material? I was just a jackass. Yeah, I was just an idiot, and uh, humor kind of got me through a lot of stuff. We met this woman on our plane from England, and she said to me, "I don't think she goes. I just want to say, you Canadians are so polite." <laughs> and every fiber in my body wanted to say. Uh, you. <laughs> you know, my joke writing just started to hit a bit of a stride and everything kind of rocked out. And then I did this thing with a comedy troupe I was in called uh, The Blockheads. We did Jerry Springer. And that definitely was a culmination of uh, just kind of everything happening at once. I mean, that changed my career. A couple of years ago, I, uh, I slept with our babysitter. That stunt that you pulled on Jerry Springer is actually one of your most popular things online. Can you tell us more about it? You know, it was, I lived with comics, a, a Montrealer by the name of Ian Sirota. When I, before I was married and when I was single and young, you know, we'd roll out of bed at the crack of 11, you know, and, and uh, we'd come downstairs and have a cup of tea and we'd watch, uh, we'd watch Springer. And then at 2.30 in the morning, it would be on again. So that's usually when we rolled in from shows, so we'd just kind of meet in the living room and watch Springer again. And one night, it was a plea. Have you ever slept with a babysitter to know someone that has? And I laughed and went to the kitchen to get ice cream. I still remember it, because we never had ice cream. And uh, Ian called and left my name in this torrid story about how I had an affair with the babysitter. And that was Friday, Monday they called back. And I said, I didn't know what you're talking about. And they just read the whole transcript back, and then it just kind of, roll from there and by Sunday we were in Chicago. Why would you choose a television show to tell your wife something so intimate? A little safer maybe. <laughs> then a reporter found out and he watched it knowing we're all, you know, it was a comedy reporter and he realized that we were all full of crap and, and uh, he called them on it and uh, you know then they sued us. Oh yeah it was a big, they were suing us for $180,000 each and our defense was good luck. You know, like, <laughs> combined, everything I own is maybe two grand. Maybe. It just kind of rolled and rolled and rolled until we settled out of court. And there was a ban, a uh, publication ban in, uh, on us that we, we couldn't talk about the settlement for three years, and that was a while ago. So I used to say it was above nine bucks and below 11. So we settled for 10 bucks. Now that's something that you did when you were single. Now that you're a married man, how has your material changed? It changed a lot. I mean, you know, I always saw these comics who were married and they did jokes about their wives and they're funny stuff, and I thought, Literally, I mean, if I get married, am I going to start doing lots of wife jokes? Yes. This is my wife keeping a lookout for me as I take a dump in the bushes. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> People who were to be paying attention to us are now like, what's going on over there? <laughs> my wife's a great gauge for it, too. I write a joke about her, and I'll be honest, I tell her every joke I write. Nothing's a surprise on stage. And nine times out of ten, it, this is the way it works. If I tell her and she goes, eh. I'll do it because it kills. If she goes, I like that, I don't because it'll die. That is tried and tested. Tried and tested. Here's a tip. If you're having an argument with your wife, like my wife will say something like, uh, <laughs> and then I'll say, yo, and then she'll say, say it. Here's a tip. Uh, don't. You never seem to be at a loss for words. Is there anything that will actually make you speechless? Uh, I think my, my kid, I have a two and a half year old, and uh, she definitely makes me speechless. This whole process of seeing something grow and, and just change day by day, I'm, I'm constantly speechless by that. And the size of her dumps sometimes are absolutely like, well, I don't, I don't know what to say. Well, thanks. It was great having you. Well, thanks for having me. I, I really do appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. And I, and I mean it. Lovely, lovely girl. Lovely. Some of these jokes you don't like right now, but later on you're going to wake up and home and go, he was good. <laughs>